Hi, my name is Georgina Sear, and uh, today we're going to work with making some raw fermented sauerkraut. Or we're going to start fermenting some cabbage, which will turn into the raw fermented sauerkraut. So, um, uh, for those of you that don't know me, I have, um, I am a certified herbalist, and um, I've taken lots of courses in natural health and healing and nutrition, and and uh, I'm pretty busy most of the time, so I I make a lot of 15 minute really fast healthy meals, and so um, yeah, so I don't spend a lot of time cooking, so I try and find really quick ways to eat as healthy as possible for me, and um, and I uh, just wanted to share with you the importance of having fermented foods, especially this the sauerkraut and um, you know from the fermented cabbage so so your green cabbage has a lot of um, vitamin K also has vitamin C although the uh, red cabbage has more vitamin C and less vitamin K um, and lots of other great nu nutrients in the cabbage of course it's cruciferous really good for the colon um, <laughs> really good for um, yeah, what we're talking about is intestinal health. And um, I also do a Facebook Live, which is pretty funny, where things do start really flying around, and we have a lot of fun. So anyway, uh, to the cabbage, um, I'm trying to peel off a little bit of the outside edges because we'll use this to put on top of the sauerkraut once we have it in the jar. And sometimes the cabbage leaves will really cooperate to let you have like almost a whole leaf uh, intact but um, often they won't and so just get some pieces and pull those pieces off so you just try to get a few pieces that you can actually um, cover your sauerkraut with and that's a pretty good chunk there so a few pieces like this really helps to protect it at the end and um, I'll show you why so basically uh, that's pretty good because we're just using the one cabbage and um, so there's several different ways of doing this, like the uh, so many different ways of cutting a cabbage and so many ways of um, really doing the sauerkraut. And so basically, um, I'm going to show you a couple different things here. And um, I'm not a professional cabbage cutter. <laughs> I don't have I haven't taken any classes on the proper way to slice the cabbage, although I have seen a lot of different ways done. And um, so I just do it my way, which is how I do most things. And um, so, yeah, so it's best to develop your own, your own way. And, um, and my way changes many times over <laughs> as you learn and grow, right? Because I've been doing this in this field for 25 years and things are constantly changing. We're always learning new things. We're always um you know evolving and a lot of the new things that we learn actually we find out that they've circled around and have been the old things that people have been doing for centuries or you know decades at least and um so yeah so we're constantly learning and sharing information and evolving and so um so it's a, uh, when i do the interactive facebook live we share ideas and it's really a lot of fun because we all learn from each other Anyway, the way I make cabbage, I do it often because it, the, the importance of having the bacteria in your, um, your intestinal bacteria healthy is like, you, you can't even explain how incredibly important that is. Um, the, um, your gut biome runs your whole immune system. Um, I mean, you know, not really physiologically, but basically, so to speak, it really does. It has to do with everything. If your intestinal health is not um, healthy and balanced and you don't have the, uh, I'm cooking something else at the same time. Um, if your intestinal bacteria is off, then um, most of everything else is gonna be off. They've done a lot of studies in, um, in also the relationship between the, um, the, your gut health, the, um, probiotics and the relationship to brain function is really, you know, there's been so much research recently on brain disorders, you know, things like Alzheimer's and autism. And, and so they're researching that and they're finding that uh, by, by maintaining a good balance of healthy intestinal bacteria, um, that those issues are helped, you know, so I think it, it just, um, <laughs> it clears the mind. 
Um, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of research on it though, and the uh, and and yeah, it's super super important. So what I'm doing here, if you can see, is I tend to um, I tend to make this a lot, and I usually make it small batches, and so I tend to slice it really thin myself with a knife, and um, the thinner you slice it, the faster it's going to ferment. Okay, so if sometimes when I'm in a hurry, and I'm usually in a hurry, I'll get bigger chunks in there, and if that happens, then uh, it just takes a little bit longer, and I don't mind because really and truly, uh, we start eating it right away, and um, you know we take a little bit out every night and um, have a little bit either on the side as a bit of a side dish or in a, in added to the salad, and um, and then. You know when it actually starts fermenting it's even better but you can start eating it right away so um, often what I will do is I will add uh, to one cabbage I will add one onion uh, also minced very thin and a carrot that is shredded you know like with a cheese grater and so I'll add that too because I really like those flavors mixed together with just a, a small medium onion to one big head of cabbage and then just maybe one or maybe you know two medium-sized carrots but you can add whatever you want to this and so you can see that this is a uh, fairly thin uh, sliced and there's a few bigger chunks in there but that's okay the other thing you can do if you are in a hurry and you're very um careful very careful this is a mandolin and it's extremely dangerous I, I highly suggest to you not to use this unless you've been shown carefully how to use it. They come with a couple different blades and you should never, never use it without the finger guard. Okay, so um, normally if you're using a carrot or a um, bead or something like that, it fits right in. And in this case, it's because the cabbage is so big, it's not going to really fit in really well. And because my hands are so far away, I'm just going to show you how to use it. Um, some people are okay with that, and it will slice it really, really thin. But make sure that you don't get within um, six inches, <laughs> six inches of the blade, and watch it carefully. This will make it much thinner, um, and you could, you know, you could fool around however you want with taking another hunk off and trying to get that thing in there. So just showing you that because a lot of people, um, I've taught this class live and a lot of people do manage to use and want to bring their mandolin and um, you know, as long as you can get it in there with the finger guard the right way, which I always find really tricky and I prefer, because it slides right off, I prefer to um, cut it by hand but anyway it, it is faster if you have the ability to do that but I'm telling you be very very careful because it's hard to handle a big cabbage in the little finger guard with a mandolin but it's possible so um so that's why I use a knife <laughs> better to be safe than sorry and so um yeah so I'm just gonna slice this and um see the it it is true. The thinner that you have it, the um, faster it's going to ferment. Some people say, <laughs> there goes my oven again. Some people say that it can ferment in three days. So of course, it's going to depend on the um, on how warm the space is where you're keeping it, right? So the warmer it is in your kitchen or the or wherever you put it that's warm, uh, is going to make it ferment faster. So there's also a lot of uh, controversy on the salt, and um, in the past, I uh, originally was using a lot of salt to um, so that it wouldn't mold. So what happens is uh, it has to be under the under the brine. So what we're doing is we're adding salt to this, and the salt starts breaking down the cabbage, and then it. Uh, it makes its own brine. So ideally, in a perfect world, um, you're not going to be adding any water to this. It's You're gonna work this cabbage enough with the salt that it's gonna make its own brine. But many times, my world has not been perfect, and it doesn't make enough brine, and uh, so I add uh, the brine, which is salt and water, um, 
pre-mixed, so the salt's already broken down. This so you wouldn't if your cabbage is made um, in the in the container, whatever. You would never add just water to the already salted brine because it's not mixing well enough, and so you've you've um, it just doesn't work. Believe me, um, adding adding water to the salted brine. So you already have to pre-mix the salt. Get it dissolved in the water before you add it to your mix if you find that the top parts of the cabbage are starting to mold. So that brings us to a whole nother uh, conversation about molds and there's um, many, many trains of thought um, and um, people's experience and Sandor Katz. Uh, he is the uh, king of fermentation and knows what he's doing. And I've, you know, I've watched his videos. Of course, I have his book. Everyone should. And um, so, you know, so if there is, a, like, in the old days, they would make a 25-gallon um, thing of sauerkraut, right, for the family to last for the winter. And I've done that, too. And it does... Um, create a uh, when you're using that amount it creates a film and so it's it's like a white film it's almost like a mother of a um, like if you're using apple cider vinegar it's kind of like a little mother film on there and it will it would kind of peel off and that's perfectly normal and and um, perfectly fine you just you just scrape that off and then you get to the sauerkraut underneath and um, so that seems to create its own um, way of living in, in the bigger batches. But what I found is in these smaller batches with just one head of cabbage is that they do tend to get that little slime, but they also do tend to mold. And so there's this perfect um, balance of um, salt that stops it from molding. And so if you, uh, in the past, I added extra salt because um, teaching a class, I was really wanting the um, students to not have it mold. So we were adding a bit extra salt uh, just so that they kind of get the hang of it. Because the first time, a few times you do this, um, people don't check it often enough. You need to check it daily, especially for the first week. And make sure that everybody, all, everybody, all, all the little pieces, all these little guys need to be under the water. And so people don't tend to check it and um, so the extra salt kind of helped with that but when you do add extra salt like that um, it it um, it inhibits the bacteria growth right so so it's kind of like a it's a tricky thing to have enough salt to um, to make it not mold but not too much salt to inhibit the uh, the action of the bacteria growth right so um, so uh, I'm going to go this way. So the other thing, <laughs> the other thing, the other things, um, uh, yeah, so important for the, for the probiotics. And so it's really important to have this if you can daily and the, um, the, um, oh my gosh, it's, it's, um, alkalizing, um, it helps, it really does actually help to control candida and yeast because, of course, it's your immune system, right? It's your intestinal bacteria, so it's going to keep under control the other bacterias that tend to um, create other health issues. Um, obviously, it helps with constipation, um, you know, it just, it just balances, right? It's not going to do anything specific for that except for balance how your body should be um, performing at its best um, so so the fermentation it creates a lactic acid and uh, um, it sounds like acid but it actually is alkalizing for the body um, the uh, I was talking about the brain health that they're relating it to the brain health and and uh, investigating when people are given um, probiotics, which you can take in a capsule too. You can do the probiotic capsules as well. It's really important and it works as well. And, and if you've been on antibiotics, you may need the capsules because it might work faster um, depending on the strain and you need to seek um, advice on what's the best strain. Anyway, um, of course, doing it naturally like this is even better over long term. 
And so, uh, so they found that when people have that right balance of the probiotics and sauerkraut daily, um, that it helps with all brain function and, and also they've um, investigated with, um, like I was saying, uh, Alzheimer's, autism and, and depression. So it just brings that, um, it brings your brain alive. It brings your intestinal bacteria, you know, to life and makes it super healthy and it helps your brain um, just to function optimally. So, so I can't say enough about it. You know, really you guys, um, you can buy it if you don't want to make it. You can buy it in a lot of grocery stores. Just make sure that it is not canned sauerkraut like what you would buy in a jar that's been cooked. It, two different, completely different animals. And um, the uh, processed sauerkraut is not, uh, it has a completely different taste as well. Like this tastes alive and it's very, yeah, it's, it's too different because, um, yeah, I never really did like canned sauerkraut when I was a kid. That's all I knew. I didn't know you could have this fantastic sauerkraut that was real and alive. So you can buy it um, raw in the stores if you don't want to make it. And you can also buy the sauerkraut juice, like the um, brine that we'll be making. You can buy the brine on its own. And it uh, there it's really popular right now. And um, there's many different flavors. And there's also a kimchi that you can make very similar to this. And, um, okay, so I better start doing this so I'm not just talking and not doing anything. Okay, so the idea is to take the salt and to um, massage it in. Ideally, in a perfect world, you really don't want to use metal um, tools to work with this uh, because of the salt and the reaction from the salt and the metals. But this bowl is too small, so I am going to put it in here. Um, I don't have a big clear plastic bowl right now that I can show you what I'm doing, so I'm going to dump it in here so that I have more room to work with it. And um, so you can use... Um, it will work with any salt, although I highly suggest that you do not use a uh, iodized salt. It will work, but it's not as healthy for you. And um, hopefully um, people kind of realize that with the iodine and stuff like that, it will work. But I prefer to use like a Himalayan salt or a Celtic sea salt or more natural mineral salt. And really you only need, um, you know, like what fits in the palm of your hand for, this is a pretty big head of cabbage. So like a, um, my, my little measuring there, if you can see it, a heaping tablespoon. Okay. So that might even be a little bit too much. Okay. So, um, yeah, so like a tablespoon, that was a big tablespoon. So you're going to put that in there and you're going to just start really, really, you know, working that in. That is a big habit of cabbage. I'm, I am going to add that extra little bit because it's a sprinkler. Okay, so yeah, heaping tablespoon. And um, so you can tell when it starts to, it'll start breaking down and, um, and it will start creating its own brine. And you can do this for like 15 minutes or, or you can do it for five minutes and give yourself a break and come back to it. Or you can do it 15 minutes, give yourself a break, come back in a half hour. Um, because the idea is once that salt hits the, um, every part of the cabbage, um, it starts breaking down. I don't know if you can see it's getting watery already. And so you're going to like squeeze and turn just like you're being a little washing machine. Um, yeah. And so, um, the other thing this, this does is it helps you to synthesize your B vitamins. So, um, you know, so that you're actually, it seems like a lot of people are under stress, um, a lot of the time. And, um, right now it's 220, 2020. And so there's a lot of stress happening. And so those B vitamins are super important. And so the sauerkraut really helps with B vitamins. And that could be, uh, you know, in my, uh, my training in, uh, physiology and nutrition and all that. Um, you know, of course the B vitamins have to do with brain function and stress. So, so it, it, that could be part of how it's working with the brain and the, um, depression and, and all of the brain, uh, you know, 
concentration, ADD, you know, stress, nervousness on the brain. So that could be how that's working. Um, the other thing, um, yeah, it just it just does everything because your intestinal system, your gut biome, bacteria, all that stuff is like the engine that runs your body. It's like the engine in your car, right? It's the main thing. And uh, it really is where everything starts. So um, there's another saying for that, and I can't remember what it is. Uh, yeah, so it's also really good in, in, for um, helping with magnesium, too. Um, yeah, it really helps with the... You see, you can see it's getting... I don't know if you can see that very well. It's getting very... Look at the juice coming out. It's just dripping out. I'll try and show you a little bit better. So, okay, so I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna rush this a bit because I don't really want to keep you guys here forever. You can see how wet this is. Um, but basically, okay, so here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna stuff it in your jar. And um, you can use the big jar here if you want, but actually, you know what, this is breaking down enough that I might be able to fit it in the little jar. You just want to make sure when it's broken down that there's enough um, brine, that it's made enough brine that, that it has to be covered. So I'm going to stuff this in and show you and then I will also uh, let you know that if you wanted to make more brine you could use like a, um, um, oh my gosh, I'm just trying to think, it's a, uh, yeah, it would be a, a tablespoon to um, to one of these of water to make more brine. Anyway, we're gonna stuff this in here, and um, what what you would do? <laughs> I'm just trying. To, I don't mean to rush you along, but I'm sure you guys don't want to watch me stir this for like another 15, 20 minutes. So you're gonna stuff it, and the most important thing here. I'll take it out of here so you can see what's going on. Okay, you're gonna stuff it, and you can use a, um, if you have something like this, to squish it down. So the, the secret is, and, and remember, this needs to be worked a lot more, like probably for another 10 minutes at least, to get it to have enough juice so that when you pound this down, all of the brine is gonna come up over the sauerkraut. And the secret to this is to get it way down in there as tight as you possibly can pack it so that there's none on the sides of the glass um, because anything sticking out of the water will tend to mold. Okay, so, so just um, pretend that there's a little bit of water here. And like I say, if you need to, you can take a, a tablespoon of salt and put it into um, a quart of water and mix... Um, when you when you're testing you can put that over top but make sure your salt is pre-mixed in the water don't just pour water on top of this ever so you're basically going to um go like this and this will hold <laughs> I, I i was going to do it in here but um anyway for matters of of convenience and time saving we're going to pretend we're doing it like this okay so you have your your cabbage leaf on top that's going to help to hold things down. Now, that's the traditional way of doing it. There's another way of doing it where you can, um, you would have your water here and you can have a, a jar that you can actually stick another jar into. And um, um, depending on the jar, you could stick a, like another jar in to hold it down under the water, right? So whatever you need to do, I've even heard of people putting like a plastic baggie full of water to hold it down under the water, although I find that doesn't work very well. I've tried that. But anyway, oh, see the juice is coming up now. It's starting to break down already. So anything sticking up is gonna mold. So this cabbage leaf is just gonna try and hold it down. Um, well, it's gonna hold it down. And then when you check it the next day, um, it'll get a little bit wilty and it will start, it will actually protect the cabbage underneath. And you can pull it out and replace it with another leaf. Um, but just however you do it, kind of get used to, to, you know, going in and having a look and take a little taste. And you might have to rinse it off because it'll be a little bit salty. But get to know it, get to um, work with it and, 
and pay attention to it every day and make sure it's under that water. And then uh, depending on the room temperature, you know, some people like their sauerkraut, sauerkraut in three days. Um, I prefer two weeks because I want it really, really full of those probiotics. Um, and then uh, the other thing, oh, the other thing I was going to show you, there's lots of other things on the market now. There's this um, little thing, whoops, <laughs> this little thing here. This is from a company called The Perfect Pickler. And if you wanted to purchase one of these, it's a canning jar lid with a little hole in it. And you can put that on. And then this has a little thing that you put water in and it, it allows it, the gases up, but stops anything from getting in because of the water, but it allows the gases up. Because what's gonna happen is as it ferments, it's going to create that um, lactic acid in the bubbles. So typically what I would do, what I have done, and I've done it many, many ways, and you know, it's all, um, don't expect it to be perfect every time. I don't expect it to be perfect at first, for sure, for sure. Um, but keep checking it and that helps you, you know, if something starts getting a little funky looking, then you're gonna um, pull it off and, and just pull the top off. Now, the other thing is, um, I'm looking around, but um, you can just, I'll just explain it because you guys really know what's going on here. <laughs> I can explain it. I don't have to show you. Uh, just cover this with a cloth and an elastic band to keep any of the, um, you know, fruit flies or bugs out and, and no dust or dirt from getting in. So you're going to cover this, but it has to breathe. If you are going to cover it with a regular canning lid, um, which I know some people have done, they're checking it every day. They're releasing those gases, right? Because otherwise the gas and that pressure is going to build up and that will be no good. So, um, so it has to breathe. It has to breathe daily if you're going to put a lid on it or you can put a, a cloth, um, paper towel, uh, coffee filter, uh, clean cloth and put it on top or you can buy one of these perfect pickler um, lid things um, that, that works as well. The other thing I was going to say is there's a lot of um, controversy on on if you if you've made a big batch and something like this or like this and, and it has that little slime thing on you can just pull that off and get to the good sauerkraut underneath like compost the, the yucky stuff and, and get to the sauerkraut underneath but sometimes it turns like moldy and um, different colors. You know, you'll you'll talk to some people that have done this for years and years, and they just they just scrape it off and eat the bottom. I if it if it doesn't look like a little you know mother kind of thing and um and like it's held together, then and it starts to look like mold mold. I just toss it. Um, but if it's just a little tiny bit at the top, and and, and just make sure it doesn't turn color or anything it turns color, throw the whole thing out. But it, it can and often does have a little thing and it kind of seals off the air. So it's almost like Mother Nature's pr provided this little seal, like a, like a vinegar mother, you know, that protects, um, just holds that and it seals it off and protects from the air getting to the bottom. So um, investigate that. Uh, that's up to you to investigate whether you want to, um, you know, just throw it out or whether you want to squirt, scrape the top off and get to the bottom. You know, if it smells weird or it really looks like mold, I would throw it out. So, um, but you'll see lots of different videos on that, lots of different experts. I'm certainly not an expert. I just share how I do what I do and, uh, and hope that it's helpful for you. Okay, so you can check out my videos, um, GeorginaSeer.com, and I have a lot of YouTube videos, and hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day.